Hello and welcome to Evenings with Anne. Once upon a time, there was a woman named Naomi, which means pleasant. The story opens at a time in her life when a famine came to the place where she lived with her husband and two sons. So the family left for another country called Moab, where there was no shortage of food. There they made a new life for themselves. But then Naomi's husband died. Still, she had her sons whom she loved dearly and who cared for her. They married Moabite women and together they lived in Moab for about 10 years. But then her two sons died. Naomi was devastated. Her most important relationships in life that made her life worthwhile and pleasant had ended. One day, she got herself together, she and her two daughters-in-law, to leave the country of Moab and set out for home. She'd heard that they were no longer in famine, so, having started out from the place she was living, they took the road, but then she turned around not long after they'd started, and said to her two daughters-in-law, go back and may God treat you as graciously as you treated my deceased sons and me. They must have loved her a great deal because they refused to leave her. But Naomi was firm. Go back, my dear daughters. Why would you come with me? There's no hope for me, she said. I've got no future to offer you if you come. It is more bitter for me than for you. God has dealt me a bitter blow, a hard blow. Um, so one of them eventually left, but the other still refused to go. When Naomi saw that, she gave in and the two of them together made their way to Naomi's hometown of Bethlehem. But when they arrived, the whole town was soon buzzing. Is this really Naomi? And after all this time? But she said, don't call me Naomi, call me bitter. The strong one has dealt me a bitter blow. I left here full of life. And God has brought me back with nothing but the clothes on my back. Why would you call me Naomi? God certainly doesn't. The strong one ruined me. Author Jerry Sitzer lost his wife, one of his four children and his mother in a car accident. He notes that loss creates a barren present, as if one were sailing on a sea of nothingness. It is impossible to imagine the future without using the present as material for our imaginations. The problem with those who have suffered loss, he says, is they are deprived of a familiar material from the present in order to envision the future. It strikes me that Naomi had that experience and in her depression, she couldn't appreciate that although she had lost so much, she still had a daughter-in-law who loved her so dearly and who wouldn't leave her to be alone in her despair and barrenness of soul. The pain of loss can be bitter, can't it? It marks the end of something we value and cherish or someone. Whether the loss results from losing your job, a relationship breakup, losing trust and a sense of innocence because of a betrayal, abuse, or a trauma like rape, a child moving out of home, someone you love becoming gravely ill and dying, or losing your health and the capacity to do things you've always enjoyed doing. But you know, Naomi's story doesn't end with her return to Bethlehem, that's it. 
there is a glimmer of hope because the story makes sure to tell us that she and Ruth arrived at the time of the barley harvest. Tomorrow evening, I'll explore that a little bit further. In the meantime, Sitsa says that in the midst of loss, gifts of grace come to us. Therefore, I pray that you and I may be ready to see and willing to receive these gifts. Remind us, suffering triumphant God of love, that this requires a kind of sacrifice. The sacrifice of believing that however painful our losses, life can still be good, good in a different way than before, but nevertheless good. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now.